Hello everybody, Happy New Year and welcome back to the 2024 series of the Grad Cracker webinars. On today's webinar we welcome MathWorks, a leading developer of mathematical computing software. We are joined by Amy, Graduate Programme and Careers Early Recruiter, thanks Amy, give the wave, and Shireen, Thomas, Tom and Ruth who all used Grad Cracker during their time at university. Tom, in particular, you liked watching the videos on the MathWorks Hub on GradCracker. Is this what inspired you to apply? Uh, yes, uh, that's played a big part in my decision. Uh, oh, I mean, good. I loved using MathWorks tools when at uni, uh, so I was naturally interested in who would, who would make those tools. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I found interviews with past members of the team, uh, you know, really useful for discovering more about the application and interview process. So it was really useful for me when I was applying to this role. Um, and also for a wee bit more insight into the culture here at MathWorks as a company. So hopefully we can do the same today. Yes, fingers crossed. We definitely, not fingers crossed, we definitely <laughs> will do that, Tom. Um, so what we're going to do now is we're going to um, start with Amy. We're going to hear all about the recruitment processes um, and hints and tips and things like that from Amy. And then I'll hand over to Jess as normal and speak to other grads about the projects that they've been working on, their future plans and everything that is MathWorks. Um, so, Amy, could you introduce yourselves, please, to the audience? Tell us a little bit more about your role and your involvement with uh, the careers. Sure. Uh, well, hi, everyone. So, I'm Amy. Um, great to meet you, and I'm really pleased to be here with Gradcracker today. Um, so, I've been with MathWorks since 2019, and my role has always focused around hiring for our, what we call our early careers program. So, I essentially manage the recruiting process for all of our interns, our student ambassadors on campus, um, and then our graduate and early career scheme. So I guess I'm pretty much the, the point of contact all the way through from application to hopefully an offer and then onboarding with us as well. Um, alongside the actual recruiting, I look after our on-campus activities, um, building our brand awareness, and looking at society partnerships and involvement there. Um, so I may have actually met a few of you already this year yeah. or previous years on campus. Um, it's a very busy, very, very busy season for us. Um, and then I guess alongside that, um, I'm also part of our DEI, our Diversity, Equity and Inclusion core team. So always looking at ways to try and incorporate this into our early careers, hiring strategies, um, and then I guess one final thing um, <laughs> is my involvement with our intern program. So I help with scheduling and managing a calendar of activities over the summer, networking, events, um, different, I guess, engagement points for, for our interns. So a pretty rounded <laughs> role that I've got here, I guess. Amy's a very, very busy lady. <laughs> very. Um, and, and speaking, I know we had a bit of a, a prep call um, before this webinar, but MathWorks. So, so what is it that you do? I know you're famous for MATLAB, but tell us a little bit more about MathWorks um, as a business. Of course, yeah. So we are a global software company um, and we are the makers of MATLAB um, Simulink. So I'm sure many of you um, on this webinar are either using our tools um, in your studies or will be using them. Um, we're, we're sort of featured in, say, majority of STEM degree courses. Um, but alongside like, education, um, I guess industry where our tools are used. Um, we're used by engineers and scientists across many industries. We're in like automotive, financial services, pharmaceuticals. I guess you name it, we're probably <laughs> in there somehow. Yeah. Um, and I guess that's a reason why I really like it because it's so far reaching what we yeah. do and the work we're doing. Um, in terms of the size, we've got over 6,000 staff members currently um, across 34 offices um, all over the world. And here in our Cambridge office, we've got just over 300 staff members. Um, we're a privately held company as well, which not many people um, know. Um, uh, and we've been profitable every year since we started. Um, it'll be our 40th year uh, this year, um, which have a, a great trip for planned. Um, and being privately held means that we can plan for the long term and focus on what's important to us, which essentially is our people and products. And I get one final thing I wanted just to note, which as of this week, uh, as of yesterday, we found out we were ranked number four uh, on Glassdoor's best places to work for 2024. So that was something that I was really pleased and really wanted to share with everyone yeah. on the call today. Brilliant. Well, congratulations. I want to hear a little bit more about this trip. Where, where are you going? Uh, we are off to Orlando. So, oh, wow. um, yeah, Amazing. every five years we have um, 
uh, a company a trip where everyone across the world will fly in and it's usually somewhere in the states given that our head office is there um and yeah we've had previous ones in san diego we've had orlando before um uh we've had one of them was a cruise actually <laughs> um wow. so yeah it, it's something that was exciting it's really great to get everyone from across the world together in one place we have alongside company meetings but there's activities involved that we've got universal studios exclusive access yeah. <laughs> um, and i can't wait for harry potter world so yes. but, yeah <laughs> It's uh, going to be a, an exciting and fun trip. Oh, yeah. wow. That sounds absolutely amazing. And and thinking about all of it, I'm going to ask you loads of questions now, Amy, because it's all coming from my brain, brain, brain. But thinking about the locations, then, I know that predominantly the opportunities are based in Cambridge. Is yes. there an opportunity for your grads, interns to, to travel and be based at different locations? Um, so we, we're hiring for our, our Cambridge office. So when we hire in Europe, our graduate programme is in Cambridge. Um the, we have a graduate program in the States and in India, but we have separate recruiting teams in those countries that will manage the hiring from their localities. Yeah, perfect. Super. OK, so future plans of the business. Don't know if you can tell me anything new and exciting that we can share with our students. Yeah, what I mean, um, alongside, of course, the, the growth of our product range, um, we <laughs> always sort of want to be very forefront of tech, cutting edge. Yeah. Um but alongside that growth, I guess, two things I wanted to talk a little bit about was um, sustainability is a really big Absolutely. feature for us. Um, we have pretty aggressive goals uh, right now to decarbonize MathWorks and help address the effects of climate change. Um, we have sort of teams that look into to doing this and we're supporting like renewable energies through solar. We've got carbon removal projects going on with like uh, reforestation um, and we're always continuously improving efficiency through through our buildings so that's a really big one in terms of our future planning is that decarbonization and that awareness of the effects that the tech industry can have on climate change yeah. um, and the second one um, is actually our efforts. We've got, a, again, another really big push in terms of continuing on building our diversity, equity and inclusion efforts. Um, we want to make sure that year on year we, we are doing better. Um, and we, we've now got three pillars uh, in terms of how we look at this. So we have our first pillar in terms of our internal staff experience and making sure we do have that culture of equity and inclusion Mm -hmm. And we've got various affinity groups, um, the, some that have started, some that are in the process of being launched this year. We have various trainings for, for staff. Um, and the second one is on the recruiting side, of course, um, creating partnerships with groups, building our networks through different events and essentially creating that more diverse talent pool to join MathWorks. Um, and the third one, something again, really interesting piece is our STEM outreach. So um, we're really keen to look at, I guess, that younger generation and inspiring the engineers and scientists of the future, uh, working with underrepresented communities on like skill building programs and um, hopefully encouraging more people, I guess, at a younger age to enter into a career in yeah. STEM. So, um, yeah, I guess alongside the, the product growth, which I guess could typically talk about, I thought I'd talk about two other areas that yeah. we're really passionate about as an organisation and, um, I guess, key reasons why people like working here alongside the tools. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's so important as well. You know, it's something that Brad Cracker and me and Jess are really passionate about bringing students on into STEM and showing them about the, the world of possibilities and potential that's in the STEM industry. So I really appreciate that, Amy. Thank you. And I think all the students and graduates who are watching, it's good for them to see the visions of MathWorks moving forward and so that they can be part of. And so you touched on this slightly by, you know, the fantastic trips that you do and everything else and everything that you've just mentioned. But culture, you know, what what the, what the key um, aspects of your culture that you can speak about on the webinar? Sure. Um, I guess the biggest one and probably one of the, the reason the, the I guess, initially drew me to MathWorks and then kept me here for my, my five year anniversary this year yeah. <laughs> um, is is how friendly and supportive and collaborative yeah. the culture is. So and I'm not just saying that, but people genuinely want to help each other. They don't want to see people fail. Um, and it really is 
a safe space if mistakes are made and there are people there and teams that are always willing to step in support and help and that was something that because I came from a non-technical background so I had a lot to learn when I joined MathWorks so um, that was something that really really appealed to me Um, and I also think especially I guess I've been here for say, almost five years now and um, I've seen a, a much um, a much more inclusive culture develop um, over the last five years um, and, and sort of that really it's a place where everyone can be their best self you yeah. know you do feel empowered I said we've got different affinity groups there's new ones starting and it, it really does feel it, it inclusive um, I guess the final thing about culture, I'd say, is we we really do live by our values. Um, so the students on the call can check out our core values on the website. Um, but it's something that that we we kind of are sort of through and through. Um, and we believe that everybody can always improve and develop and learn and showcase themselves. So yeah. uh, hopefully that summarizes <laughs> yeah, a bit definitely. about our culture and what we're like here. Yeah, absolutely. And I think this, those messages will definitely come across as part of this webinar as well. So thank you, Amy. And now moving on to um, the opportunities that MathWorks has on the company hub on GradCracker at the moment. So they've got internships and graduate roles currently advertised, all open to multiple candidates and across all STEM disciplines. So just to explain to you what they are. So the internships cover software development and UX design, both, like Amy said at the beginning, both based, based in Cambridge with a deadline of the 31st of January. And the graduate programme is for the Engineering Development Group, predominantly based in software engineering again, based in Cambridge with a closing date, similarly, of the 31st of January. So make sure, I'm pushing the 31st because it is just around the corner. And um, So make sure you get your applications in after this webinar. And like Tom mentioned right at the beginning, you know, make use of the, of the hub on GradCracker watch the videos, watch the profiles and things like that. So what we're going to do now is move on, meet the grads and before we come back to Amy towards the end of the webinar. And um, so Shireen, I'm going to start with you. Could you tell the audience where you went to university and what did you study? Um, hi everyone. Um, I did mechanical engineering in the American University of Beirut. Then I did a, a PhD in human robot collaboration in Coventry University. Perfect, thank you very much Shireen. Thomas? Uh, yeah, so I I did um, uh, an integrated master's in maths and computer science at the University of Oxford. Lovely, thank you, Thomas. Just to confuse things, Tom. <laughs> uh, yeah, I studied at Glasgow University. I did an integrated master's and then stayed on to do a PhD in aerospace engineering. Fantastic, thank you. Very different background so far. And Ruth, last but not least, tell us about you. Yeah, I did an integrated master's in engineering at the University of Oxford, and then I did a research master's in civil engineering um, here at the University of Cambridge. Perfect. Thank you very much. And now before I hand over to Jessica, let's break the ice and you've got your full day then, Jess, and get, let's get uh, the top top facts for Bathworks. And again, starting with you, Shireen, what's your top or cool, interesting fact? So added to the five-year trip that happens every five years to the US, we've got also a, every summer we have like a fun day outing um, in the UK for all the families to join in as well alongside. Oh, um, yeah. What was the last one? Did you go in the last one? I, I was hired in September, so I just missed the last one. Oh, and no. This year we've got the US one, so it's going to have to be to the next one. <laughs> oh, I look forward to hearing about that in next year. <laughs> Thanks very much, Shreen. Thomas? Uh, yeah, so I mean, I don't know. I don't know if this is a fun fact necessarily, but I uh, I find it quite amusing to see all of the different places that kind of MATLAB ends up being used. So, um, you know, serious things like the Orion spacecraft, uh, sorry, the, the Artemis 1 program and like the India space program. Um, but then also we I, I think we, we kind of recently published an article on our uh, on our website about um, some researchers that were trying to figure out why these pumpkin toadlets, which are like tiny little frogs, why they can't jump, and um, I encourage everyone to go and re uh, go and Google it because we have a it's, it's, it's essentially how Pete, how researchers are we using MATLAB to try and figure out these these frogs jump in a really weird way, <laughs> and uh, and there's a really interesting article about it um, on our on our website, so I recommend you go and Google that. But it's it, yeah, I find it quite fascinating just seeing all the different places that we crop up. Wow, I'm definitely going to Google that and I'm going to add that article <laughs> to your hub so please yeah. have a look. Yeah. There, there's a very amusing video. 
Right. Oh, okay. Uh, give <laughs> give us full close of play today, and Amy, if I'm allowed, I'm going to put that on your hub. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks very much, uh, Thomas. Tom. Uh, yeah, something I think is really cool and has really struck me since I joined is uh, MathWorks Social Mission. So the company is really dedicated to get involved in the local community with like charity efforts, but also promoting STEM and with outreach events. And there's lots of opportunities for like staff members to get involved with stuff like this. And it's something I'm looking forward to to take part in this year. Okay. Uh, I mean, some of the examples I've heard about are things like volunteering with local charities, yeah. doing events at you know local universities, workshops at the science museum. Um, and we all actually receive a day of uh, volunteer time from the company to use each year. Yeah. So yeah, hopefully get involved with that in the coming year. Oh, brilliant. Yeah. Inspiring people, the younger mm. generation. Not that you are not the younger generation. <laughs> uh, thanks very much, Tom. And last but not least, Ruth. Yeah, it was kind of uh, teased by Tom a little bit, but MathWorks, I didn't know this, but they sponsor a gallery at the Science Museum in London. So the Engineers Gallery is sponsored by MathWorks. And uh, because of that, we get some uh, like discounts for entry to galleries and invited to some cool events and stuff. It's pretty cool to know about. Oh, it all sounds very exciting working at MathWorks. So let's hand it over to find you. Out yes. and find out more. Find out more. Find out more, shall we? So, Shireen, I'll start with you because you're at the top of my list, my love, if that's okay. So, yeah, you tell us, what have you been up to? What does your role entail? And what is life like for you at MathWorks? So, um, as an EDG, uh, which is the Engineering Development Group member, um, our role is divided into two main parts. So the first part is providing technical support for the company's customers. Um, so uh, that could range from a variety of fields, as Amy's mentioned, like automotive, finance, medical, uh, f- lots of things, um, education as well. Yeah. Um, so we, we help these customers by by like email or sometimes uh, screen sharing and uh, we get involved with developers as well uh, across the company to to solve uh, the customers um, issues Um, and then the other part is also being involved in a variety of projects across the company so we get to choose like a team uh, that we want to work with and we get to work with this team for a number of weeks on a on a certain project and see see how it feels like to be in that team Um, Yeah, so I want to delve a lot more about your rotations and how the the kind of scheme really, really works. So you say you started in September. Yeah. Um, So from September to now, what, four or five months, how has that process been for you? And what's kind of, I know it's a bit of a um, a recruitment term, but how's the onboarding process been? And how have you found life so far at MathWorks? It was a pretty smooth transition because uh, there was uh, a lot of training at the beginning for the variety of products Um, because some of us have used MATLAB, but then MathWorks does a lot more things as well. Uh, So we got training for different things and obviously also some soft skills about how to deal with customers. And uh, yeah, Uh, and then we started our projects uh, also recently. So that's good so in terms of um obviously you know working externally with clients and you know all of you have said already in in terms of the different industries that you can be exposed to as well and working with people across you know so many different uh you know walks of life how have you found that already because is it hard to speak to kind of one client and then you speak to the next and it's completely different problem in a completely different industry you know how do you find that uh, yeah, every client is different because uh, each one has a different field. So even if the field is new to us, um, we get to collaborate with the specific team that deals with that field within MathWorks. So, yeah. so we do learn from both sides as well. Uh, so even if something's new to us, there's always people to help. Yeah. So was you aware of MathWorks before you applied in terms of MATLAB? Did you use that, you know, in your degree course and did you have much experience of it? And was that a draw for you to to put your application in initially for MathWorks? Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, I used MATLAB in my undergrad and then throughout my PhD project was based in MATLAB as well. Um, So I was a MATLAB um, fan enthusiast. (laughs) So uh, working at MathWorks was quite (laughs) nice to me. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, in terms of your um, kind of your history in terms of, you know, d- your degree and, you know, going on was it your master's that you went to go and do after, um, you know, did you always know that this was a career option for you working at MathWorks or, you know, you know, why MathWorks really what, what I'm asking for? Because, you know, doing mechanical, is mechanical you studied originally? Yeah, yeah. 
um, you know, yeah, why? And why did you not really want to say progress more in a, with a mechanical company or in that particular industry? Why MathWorks? Uh, because um, I used math, math, MATLAB a lot uh, during my degree. Mm -hmm. So I realized that I do enjoy MATLAB as a software. Um, and I do enjoy a variety of mechanical engineering disciplines. Yeah. So I couldn't really choose a specific one to delve into. Even yeah. after my PhD, I realized that what I really enjoyed was working with MATLAB. And even after my PhD, I went on to doing some MATLAB freelancing, for example. So then working with, with MathWorks was a very nice transition um, yeah. to doing that full time with yeah. the active MathWorks company. Fantastic. Really good story. So like I say, I'm going to come back and talk more about the rotations and projects. I'm so excited to ask it. Um, so we'll come back to you, Shireen, on that. Um, but Tom, I'm going to come to you next. Is it Tom Molest? Tom's no, it's actually Tom. Thomas. Thomas. <laughs> <laughs> Great confusion already. Thomas, you yeah. are next on the list. So I'm going to come to you. <laughs> Sorry. It's me. Let me scroll down on my questions <laughs> so I don't get confused. Um, Thomas, so you did an intern first. Yes. Yes. So yes. tell us why you did an intern at MathWorks. What was that pro process like for you? And yeah, what's the kind of the grad pro program been like so far? Um, so yeah, I mean, I I wanted to, I knew that I wanted to do an internship. So I did this at the end of, um, well, I, yeah, I did this at the end of my third year. Brilliant. Um, okay. So uh, it was actually kind of back when kind of COVID was still wrapping up. So I did, I did a remote internship. Um, and yeah, I guess, I guess kind of, so I, I, I come from a computer science background, so I, I knew what Mat MATLAB was. I, I hadn't really heard of any of our other products, but I, I knew what MATLAB was. And so, uh, I guess when I was looking for kind of, um, when I was looking for internships, this one kind of appealed to me just because it was kind of like, but well, I do maths and computer science, so I like maths and I like yeah. computer science. So doing coding for a company that called MathWorks, it kind of, you know, it makes <laughs> it's sense. a win-win. <laughs> yeah, so I, um, so that's kind of, that was one of the things that initially appealed to me, just like it was, you know, software development for a company that I liked, you know. Yeah. Um, and then, and then, yeah, and the internship was, was really good. Um, I did, uh, it was a three-month internship and mm -hmm. uh it was yeah so so when you start i think they they kind of pick a project for you um right. and you get assigned a team and i think that's kind of based on your skills so they'll kind of look at your cv and you know help yeah. pick up you know they, they weren't going to throw me into like a a random aerospace kind of thing they you know yeah. they know what you want to do um and and yeah it was it was a really good experience i i um i i worked in a team i i had daily meetings with them i attended all of the kind of big team meetings um and I kind of showed them my progress we did planning it, we, we kind of went through the full software development cycle uh yeah. and then at the end of it my my kind of project ended up shipping in the next release of MATLAB so it was really cool being at university still and having all the engineers and stuff using MATLAB and I could go up and be like oh, oh that's my code I know. <laughs> <laughs> um, I know that. <laughs> yeah so so I guess did I did that cover your question yeah <laughs> absolutely yes. so in, in terms of that transition then you've done your internship you're back at university was it an absolute yes I want to start my graduate career with MathWorks and um, what was the kind of next step like for you yeah, so I think I think typically if you if you kind of do well on the internship, you know, if you interact with it well and and yeah. and you know you you gel with the team well and everything goes well, I think there's a good chance that you'll get invited back. And yeah. so that's what happened with me. I got invited back to work here full time. Um, and yeah, I I pretty much just said yes. Like I didn't yes. really I didn't look for any other jobs really. I just kind of was like, yeah, I'm I'm yeah. happy. I enjoy my time here. Um, and so and so yeah, and, and now it's kind of helped me starting um with kind of projects and stuff. Um. Because I've I've got that kind of experience already doing mm -hmm. projects with MATLAB uh, with MathWorks, sorry, um, and and yeah, so so that was kind of the how the transition worked for me at least. It was a lot smoother um, in terms of feeling comfortable and knowing who you're going to be working with. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, in terms of life, then so you started in September as well. That's right. Uh huh. Yeah. So from September to now, what's life been like for you? And um, you know, is it is the, is the role what you expected has it been a bit different and who you've been working with um yeah so I mean it's it's, it's I kind of had a good idea of what the role was going to be because I was I did the internship yeah. um so I got to see kind of like what other people were doing in in in, in the graduate program um mm -hmm. and uh and so yeah it's it's been good though I I kind of I so so like Shireen was mentioning we we do work with customers on a daily basis um at least you know 
for a half of our time here. Uh, and so I, I mean, I think I was quite nervous about that initially, but yeah, um, as because because you know you have to you have to speak about things that you know you've never heard about sometimes, yeah. and yeah. it can be quite intimidating. But uh, but I think as as Amy was mentioning before, that the kind of collaboration here is is mm -hmm. excellent. Like we have other colleagues which are more experienced that you can always talk to and the onboarding process is very thorough um and and yeah so I think I think it was it was it's kind of gone smoother than if you'd have told me a year or so ago that this is what I'd have been doing I would have been really yeah. nervous about it I think but the, I think that the the kind of onboarding process is is very thorough and it's very supportive so Thomas, you've made a really good point then and I love it when people say that on these webinars because and you know and this is in terms of the audience, this is what I want people to take from these webinars is, you know, what you're doing now where you could be, in, you know, mm -hmm. eight months time or a year's time, two years time is a completely different place. Yeah. So keep an open mind, you know, experience as much as you can. Don't pigeonhole yourself. You know, if you are doing a certain degree, doesn't mean you have to go to, into a certain industry. You know, we've heard that already from you guys and your experiences. So for the audience, you know, take, um, you know, advice from what everyone's saying so far. Keep an open mind because I love it when people say, God, I never thought I'd be here doing this yeah. job, you know, working with these kind of people um, in, you know, in 12 months time so yeah it's really really good that you've made that point so yeah I'm going to come back to you Thomas in terms of the projects I'm dying to hear about that as well and um, so Tom I'm coming to you next and <laughs> um, similar kind of question what's life been like for you at MathWorks so far yeah it's been great um I think I mean I can kind of touch on what Shireen and Thomas said like unlike Thomas I hadn't done an internship when I joined so I mean there's naturally going to be things about the role that you learn when you join um some surprises but Something I definitely touch on that's maybe not been uh, brought up yet is that in addition to the kind of technical support and project work side of our role, uh, there's mm -hmm. lots of opportunities for you know taking on additional responsibilities and roles that we can get involved with within the group, such as like leadership roles. And it feels really good because you get given the chance to kind of take ownership of something and take the lead on something, um, you know, for so you can get involved in the interview process. Uh, so that members of the team uh, are also involved in that. Uh, in our training procedures, um, you can take uh, roles um, such as like becoming the group leader for a week for the technical support work um, when you're later into the programme. Um, so yeah, it's 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 really enjoyable from that side of things and there's lots of extra things that you can also get involved in. Um, maybe another thing I would touch on is that I think I think Thomas kind of said this, but you, you are constantly exposed to different domains and that's just fascinating. So if I mean, the people watching this, if you're studying STEM, I'm sure this will apply to you. Like, you're, you're interested in technology and how people are applying different types of uh, tools and areas that it can really find use in. And so that's fascinating. And you really do find something new every day. So um, that's a, that's something that I really enjoy with the ball. Um, yeah, I can imagine. Yeah. I, I think that must be so exciting knowing as well, every day is going to be different. And that's a bit of a cheesy line to say as well, isn't it? You know, everyone says that every day is different at work, but especially for you guys, it will be different. You're going to have different customers ringing in, you know, different needs, different requirements, and you don't know who's going to ring tomorrow or what the needs or the demand is going to be tomorrow. So it's really, really exciting. And there's also as well, like what Amy said, you know, you're working on things now internally, which are going to completely change industries so you're going to change hopefully that you know the, the way we're all going to be working within 10 years you know 20 years time so it must be an exciting thing to think to know that you're going to be part of that yeah yeah, it's um, really Ruth, interesting yeah i can imagine ruth going to come to you similar kind of question you know why math works and tell us a bit more about your current role yeah so i um i was interested in joining math works because i i knew about the um, rotation and the projects and moving around and I didn't really know exactly what I wanted to do so mm -hmm. that was really appealing to me the opportunity to get to try lots of different things yeah and so I joined MathWorks um, September 2022 okay. um, and I was in EDG for just under a year and now mm -hmm. I've actually transferred out of EDG and I work as an advanced support engineer in the deep learning team so that's taking more of a long-term view of technical support and specifically in deep learning. Um, but a lot of my colleagues in EDG, one of the things is you transfer to whatever team you find interesting. So I really enjoyed the problem solving technical support. So that's what I've moved into. A lot of my colleagues have gone into software development, software testing, documentation writing, that kind of thing. 
Oh, Ruth, million questions. I'm going to come to you then a bit about your projects and stuff that you've been working on. So deep learning then. So is it a particular, are you kind of focusing then on a particular a topic, a particular, you know, area? Or again, is that widespread across lots of different uh, areas of the business and industries and clients that you've been looking after? Yeah, what's, uh, what's really cool about the deep learning and math works is we're really looking at how we can get engineers in so many different industries using okay. AI in their tools and stuff. So that's it. It's all about kind of how can we improve what's already going on if that's in the automotive industry or in finance or medical imaging. And it's about being that that person in between the customer and the developers who are actually writing the code. Okay. So in terms of um your team then, um, how does that work? Are you working with um kind of a broad team, you know, um in Cambridge, or is it quite a small team that you're working with? What does that look like? Yeah, the, the I um work mostly in with the deep learning team. So I sit with the developers there. It's one of the big development teams in Cambridge. So I think there's about uh like fifteen or so developers, something like that. And then you have all of the uh, people that do UX for deep learning, the documentation writing, the testing, we all kind of work together as one big deep learning team. So now you've come off the graduate program, if I can kind of call it that, Amy, if that's all right. So now you've come off the, the graduate program and um, now you're in this particular role. Can you see yourself for the foreseeable in this role or, you know, how does it work now that you've come off the program? Can you still get those rotations? Can you still get exposed to different projects or are you kind of now set within the deep learning team? Yeah, so not, right now I'm in a kind of like full time, like this is my this is role now in yeah. MathWorks. But there's a lot of um, a lot of people like move internally within MathWorks after yeah. like a few years and stuff. Brilliant. So as well, then Ruth, if you wanted, um, obviously maybe you want to you know have the, your full career within Cambridge, but if you wanted as well, there's then the options if you wanted to move internationally. Stay in Orlando potentially. <laughs> works. Um, I don't know. Could that be an option for you then as well in the future? Well, I think with the work that I do, it's mm -hmm. uh one of the things is like we really try and stay within our like working directly with our development teams. Yeah. So because as what's kind of interesting is we're very US, uh, like a lot of the companies in the US, and then but all of our kind of deep learning stuff happens in Cambridge. So oh, does it? Okay. for this role, yeah, it's um. It's about staying in Cambridge with the developers here. Yeah. Oh, good. So is am I might maybe I should know this before the webinar, so I do apologize. So is Cambridge almost like HQ then? That's where no? So the it's uh the kind of HQ is um in Massachusetts in oh, the US. Okay. Uh, and that's Amy will know how many thousands of people work there, <laughs> but um a lot. And then our Cambridge is kind of one of the bigger right. small offices. Yeah, interesting. Perfect. Brilliant. Well, thank you, Ruth, for that. So, Shireen, I'm going to come back to you because I'm dying to hear about your rotations and projects and, and what you've been working on in more detail. So, yeah, go for it. What, what projects have you been working on so far? Uh, the project that I started with was with the deep learning apps team, uh, which was basically to design a feature that's going to be um, shipped with a future release of Math, MATLAB. Um, but uh, it was a nice project because I got to, so coming from an engineering background, it was my first time learning about the software development cycle. Uh, yeah. So how things are pitched from the start, how a design uh, presentation review is made and delivered to the team. Uh, as Ruth said, comes people come from a variety of disciplines, such as the documentation, uh, user interface, um, testing. Uh, and then getting feedback from everybody and incorporating it and implementing it in code and how code is merged with the existing code base, et cetera, and tested. Uh, so it's very interesting for me to learn about all this process in this project. Do you feel as though then, um, you know, before you started at MathWorks, um, is there anything, a kind of advice you could give to the audience listening now in terms of, coding skills, coding languages they could be practicing, um, you know, if they were interested in MathWorks and putting an application in, was there anything which you thought, um, you know, not necessarily coming from a computer science background that you think, oh, was you a bit nervous about and maybe you could have done more of or wish you knew beforehand, maybe? Um, my main programming experience is MATLAB, even though I know Python and C++ and some other languages as well. Uh, yeah. But I'm most comfortable in MATLAB. But it's nice to know that within the company, they use a variety of languages as well. Exactly. Uh, and even if I were to do a project with another team that would 
use like uh, say JavaScript, for example, um, my mentor in that team would help me ramp up in that language. Uh, yeah. So I was nervous but now, not anymore. <laughs> Good. So you've got that support, you know, as well yeah. going forward. If you if you need to know something or you you maybe your knowledge isn't you know up to scratch, you've you've got someone who you can say, I need some support here, I need some help, and you've got it. Yeah, Dream project. We have a mentor, so someone to go to, um, if if we need to learn anything. That's really good. So how often do you meet with your mentor? Then is it frequent or? Yeah. Uh, so within my project time, uh, usually it's like a everyday catch up. Uh, oh, yeah. and oh, me whenever you want kind of thing yeah yeah so will they then help in terms of um the next rotations next projects keeping you up to date with other projects that are maybe coming in that you you want to get involved in or is that kind of up to you then to to, to keep up to date with what's going on within the business and the other projects that are happening um, it's more up to me uh to decide if I want to look at a, a different project from a different team and then that would have a different mentor um and oh, I see. Yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah so a mentor is like the person in the project team that you're directly working with um that you can go to for a, a you know day-to-day questions about um the, the code that you're implementing brilliant and do you find that there's much crossover with other grads as well or do you find that you're kind of exposed to lots of people within the team you know senior members as well as kind of other grads like I say or you know how does that work for you so when we do a project with a team, we get to, um, there are usually a number of, you know, sometimes one or more uh, EDGers that are also working with the team. Uh-huh. And we get to attend all the team meetings as well. Some of them are, um, you know, the the weekly team meetings. Some of them are the meetings that happen every release cycle. Uh, so we get to see the whole process uh, while we're there. Oh, that's good. Um, in terms of again, when I'm lo- looking at content on your hub, I got I got that from your hub content yeah. that there was a lot of crossover. You know, you you can ask, you know, senior members of the team. You know, you're working with those people. Um, it's all about kind of collaboration all the time. I got that from from the hub, which I thought was really really nice, and especially for you, for you to to say it as well, Shireen. So so thank you so much for that, Thomas. I'm going to come back to you if that's okay. Um, yeah. So tell us a bit more about the rotations and projects as well that you've been involved so far um yeah so so i've 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 only done one project so far um okay. and i actually did it with the same team that i did my internship with oh, um, okay so that team is it's kind of a it's kind of a niche team it's the, it's called the comparisons team um so we make well the, the, the team makes tools to compare different files essentially so okay. my internship project was about comparing two text files um and then my internship project specifically was making reports of those comparisons mm-hmm. um so so it's kind of that was kind of it's kind of a niche thing um but then my my recent project was actually working on uh this this summer we had an intern that uh, kind of they revamped one of these comparison tools uh, and they revamped the whole thing, made it look way more modern um, and they, they did a load of work on it. Um, but it wasn't quite ready to be kind of shipped yet. And so right. I was essentially, my project this time that I've been working on, uh, it was a three week project and it was essentially trying to kind of like help get that to a stage where it would be able to be shipped in, in a future release. Um, so that kind of, it was a development project. It was kind of, uh, I did a bunch of C++ um, kind of backend type of thing. And then I also went in and did some JavaScript. Um, so actually changing the UI of, of, um, of this tool uh, and then kind of melding it all together. Um, yeah. So, so, so that was, that was the project that I did. Um, and then like Shireen said, uh, there's a, there's kind of, I, I, I've never really done much C++. Okay, um, yeah. And I did something similar in my internship and it took me about two weeks to, to add a, add a button or something to the, to the tool strip. So it was, it was quite useful having, having a mentor. Um, and like Shireen said, I, I, I met with, I met with him every day, um, but it ended up being more than that. You know, I would, I would quite often message him being like, I've tried, I'm stuck. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's good though, that you feel as though you can do that as well. Yeah. That's yeah. Nice. Um, okay. And it was it was great for me because obviously I, I kind of knew some of the members of the team um, yeah. already, and so I was kind of it helped kind of with that. But I think that everybody's very all of the people that take on projects they're all very kind of willing to help. Um, 
and and even with the, with this project i did it over christmas so it was kind of it was on like the you know the 27th and 28th of, of december when nobody was in the office yeah. um and it was around that period so my mentor actually wasn't in for a lot of it right. and and i was struggling like I, you know i was i was struggling quite a bit and and I just ended up reaching out to random people in the team. So I think I ended up having like three different members of the team help me. Um, and they were all really helpful. And it kind of just shows that everybody's happy to help. Um, yeah. Yeah. Nice. And so even even without my mentor, I was, I was able to make progress. Um, but yeah, it was it was a good, good project. Yeah, it sounds it. And just to go back as well, it sounds as though um, the person who, the, the intern that you were kind of um, obviously helped finish off the project for them um in terms of the responsibility you're getting a lot of responsibility um you know very early on aren't you almost given full projects to work on and it must be really nice to feel as though that you are working on the product that's actually going out and you know people are going to get the benefit from it yeah I mean I mean even as an intern you know you you the work that you do it depends on the internship but like I, like I said before, like my my work as an intern is actually shipping, um, mm-hmm. and and it's the same now. You know, I think most of we, we're all doing real work. You know, it's mm-hmm. the, they're not just giving us toy projects. It's yeah. where we you know we 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 they they kind of advertise. Um, so I, I know we talked before. What Shireen said about trying to get these projects, um, mm-hmm. and that's kind of one of the things that is it is our responsibility to go and network with these different teams and 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 go and reach out to them and ask if they've got any projects available. Um, and and there is kind of you, you do feel like a grown up, you know, in that sense that yeah. you, you you're responsible for organizing your project. You can do it in whatever you want to do, um, and there is there is tons of flexibility in 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 that kind of sense. Yeah, that's really good. A bit of a left field question, Thomas. And yeah. again, apologies. This is me not being a STEM student or having a STEM background, and my lack of technical knowledge. So, am I right in thinking then? Is you know, say when you're working with a client, could they personalize MATLAB to suit their business needs? Or is MATLAB just a system which anyone can use and you would use it to get the answer that you, you need to find? Yeah, so so MATLAB is MATLAB is a is a is a product, you know, it's it's like um it's like Zoom or what it's probably more complicated than that, but it's you know, it's it's, it's a product. So they can't really they can't really necessarily customize the the software themselves but okay. they can definitely give us feedback so we, we 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 have kind of teams within MathWorks that work directly with customers in a kind of a more consultancy type way okay. um, and if they come to us and they want specific things there are people within the company not us but there's people within the company that will do that and kind of do things that are more tailored towards them but then also like if customers come to us and say uh you know I want this how do I do it and we say oh it that doesn't exist yet you know we will kind of pass that on to the developers so they can't necessarily customize it themselves um, yeah but we we kind of we that is a lot of what we do on a daily basis you know taking yeah. kind of input from customers um and that's i think one of the benefits of that's what the company kind of sees as a benefit of this graduate role you know of us working with customers is that we then move on from our graduate role into a development role knowing what customers like so you kind of you get a you get a better experience of knowing what customers like and that then kind of hopefully improves the quality of the product um yeah. Especially, yeah, for the long term of the business as well. Um, yeah, so, yeah, exactly. Essentially, you guys are the pipeline of the business, you know, hopefully yeah. being like Ruth, wanting to stay and, you know, one day, you know, leading the business into the direct, the right direction. So really, really good point. So thanks, Thomas. And thank you for answering my silly question. Um, okay. Tom, going to come to you next, if that's OK. Um, yeah, tell us a bit more about the rotations and projects as well that you've been involved in. Yeah, so I joined in August, so I've done two projects so far. Okay. Um, so the first project that I did was with the user experience team. Mm-hmm. This was in, it was like research into the ease of use of some of the upcoming features uh, for MATLAB. Um, and the way that we do this is by user testing, and we observe people interacting with the software and then obtain feedback. And this this is really enjoyable because you get a sense of maybe how the developer intended something to be used and then how a user might interact with it and maybe some of the pain points that would come up that you maybe didn't expect. And it helps to improve a product. So you can get a sense of, well, where's the priority here? What can be improved? Um, what's maybe important to change? And um, So that was my first project. That was really enjoyable. And then the output of that is just a, a list of recommendations that the developers can then go away and, and work with. Mm-hmm. And then right now I'm doing a project with the 
wireless standards team in our Glasgow office. Uh, where I'm working on a project that involves uh, ray tracing for 5G communications. So this is a, a kind of really useful way to model how video waves propagate in compla complex environments uh, right. for a, you know, a variety of applications. But um, yeah, those are the two that I've been involved in so far. So a bit like Thomas said then, did you pick this current project that you wanted to go into and, and how did you pick that and you know why did you pick this particular project? Yeah, there's a kind of combination. So um, you can uh, go to different project teams if you have an idea for something that you want to do. And I'm yeah. sure that every team would be like, would listen to you and, and be able to engage with that. Uh, in both of my cases so far, it was just teams that I was interested in doing projects with. Mm -hmm. I went and had a conversation with the team and they told me some of the things that they were interested in working on. And then I got a, just a chance to learn more about the team and exposure to what they're working on via things that they've already got planned. So. Uh, in my case, so far, it's been uh, projects that the team are already working on and that I can get involved with. Yeah, definitely. And then, <clears throat> Tom, in terms of future plans then, how long have you got left on the on the graduate programme? Um, so there's not like a fixed, there's not like a fixed length of time that people stay oh, in not. the programme. It's, it's, it's flexible. So it can vary from as little as maybe just under a year to over two years. There's no deadline or anything. The, the kind of the idea is that you, you transition out of, of the group when you're ready and when you've found a project team that, you know, you're that that's what you want to transfer to. And so you're yeah. getting the time and space to explore different teams and do, do that at your own pace. So, Ruth, that's kind of like how it, well, I see it makes sense. Sorry, now I get it. I'm there. I'm there. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you're right. I get it. So in terms of... um. Once you've kind of got to that destination, then you think, yes, I like this particular group. I like this project. You can then, like I say, stay in that for as long as you want. But so right now, Tom, if you liked this 5G project, you could say, I'm, I'm going to stay here for the foreseeable. This could be a two-year, three-year project for you if you wanted it to be. Um, you, what, would, what would happen is you would maybe keep doing projects with that team. And mm -hmm. if, a, if there was a position available with them, after doing a few projects, the idea is that you would, I mean, the projects are not only good for you to develop your skills, but it's also yeah. a great way for the team to see if you're the right fit for them. Mm -hmm. And then, yes, after a series of projects, if there's an open position, that that's something you can hopefully transfer into. Brilliant. But otherwise, you know, the programme is quite good in that uh, our skills development plan or our, our career development plans account for the fact that maybe there isn't an open position in the team that you necessarily would, you know, would be your first choice. But you have several other teams that you can maybe target to if that's not an option for you. Brilliant. Good stuff. Thank you for thank you for clarifying. Thanks, Tom. Um, Ruth, I'm going to come to you. We've talked a bit about your future plans. So I'm going to come to you with um, kind of moving away from your day job a bit and, and kind of the experiences that you've had so far at MathWorks kind of outside of your day job and what else have you been up to? And, um, you know, you've mentioned a lot, all of you about, you know, kind of volunteering days and, you know, getting involved in, in traveling, which sounds amazing. But yeah, what other experience have you had so far at MathWorks you want to share? the group yeah so when I was in EDG um especially over the summer I was an intern buddy so okay I was uh, in a small team of intern buddies I was looking after I think like seven interns um so that was kind of just being a, a point of contact um running like weekly meetings and helping Amy with some of the different activities that we run for the interns. We did like quizzes and um, oh, cool. different yeah. events and stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that was when I was still in EDG. That's really, and also when I left EDG, actually, I was still doing that. And uh, the other things I uh, like to get involved in some of the like affinity groups at work. So we've got like a women's affinity group and like an LGBTQ plus affinity group uh, that I get involved in. And I also, I'm learning French on a Thursday lunchtime, so that's what I was right. doing this lunchtime. <laughs> and uh, sometimes I go and play football, uh, like five a side with some people from work at lunch as well. There's a lot going on. <laughs> Very and, varied. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, it's a bit of everything. <laughs> so Ruth, putting you on the spotlight, then what French did we learn at lunch? Oh my goodness, I can't believe you're doing this to me. I thought you were going to do that. <laughs> yeah, I'm all for that. No, that's great though, that you, you know, you've got that opportunity to learn another language. Another language. So absolutely brilliant that you put yourself forward for that. Um, Shireen, I don't know if you want to add to that um, in terms of any kind of extracurricular activities you've been up to so far. Um, so one of the things that I'm enjoying now uh, that's not related to tech support or projects is being involved in the interview team. Mm -hmm. 
which is basically the, the team that interviews uh, the upcoming interns or uh, graduates that are coming. So we're, I'm getting trained now to be able to conduct the technical interview oh, cool. uh, for yeah. these applicants. So that's quite fun uh, and interesting. Yeah. And it feels like a lot of responsibility, but uh, it's it's nice to handle. Brilliant. So some of the audience then listening today, they might be... Um... I'd see my face again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so remember this face, <laughs> uh, ladies and gentlemen watching. Um, so that's really good. So in terms of, again, I, I don't keep asking you this question, but any advice that you would give uh, to, to the students that are going on to apply for the, the, the technical interview? Uh, just to focus on the uh, like problem solving skills and be yourself in the interview. Um, speak yeah. your thoughts uh yeah. yeah yeah love it really really good and um thomas and tom uh, i don't know if you want to add anything to kind of extracurricular activities that you guys have been involved in um yeah i, I can go first um so uh yeah i mean probably the the biggest thing that i've done recently is uh, every release cycle um so every six months we do something called the bash uh which yeah. is essentially where everybody that kind of all the developers and everybody you know is encouraged to break MATLAB essentially so before we kind of push it out to all of our customers the new release we're encouraged to try and find as many bugs as we can and yeah. specifically in the graduate scheme there is a, a little competition so there are a bunch of different like teams within the grad scheme um I don't remember how many but like 12 probably of about eight people each across like the UK America and India and uh and so I was a bash captain and uh Shireen Shireen helped me out quite a lot with it as well and we essentially organized things called bash parties which was where everybody comes together in a room um and just tries to break MATLAB together and it's yeah. it's quite a fun little thing because it's, it's kind of a competition it's like how much did each team break MATLAB? <laughs> so, <laughs> and it's um that's quite a fun, a fun activity. Um and yeah, uh away from the day. I mean, today when we came into the office, there was a bunch of bikes. There was two stationary bikes in the canteen um right. with a smoothie blender attached to it. And so uh, me and me and one of my colleagues uh kind of you you <laughs> we went and sat on these bikes and put some um put some smoothie mix in and blended it up on the bikes. So nice. there's kind of there's always weird things going on. Um, <laughs> Busy uh, lunchtime, guys, by the sounds of it. Oh, no, that was that was, in that, French. We've that got was breakfast. That was oh, breakfast. breakfast. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. First thing in the morning. <laughs> oh. Um, so can we get this on the record then, Thomas? Did you break that lab? Are we allowed to admit that live yeah, on no, it? Yeah, of course we did. Yeah, we, we, um, oh, we, found, yeah. we, found, we found, I think... I, well, I can't remember, but we, we, we found we found quite a bunch of, of things. Um, but it wasn't, you know, it's, it's not what's being shipped yet. It's no, kind of absolutely, yeah. It's detested. nothing that's alive. No, yeah, no yeah. I'm sure it'll all be great once it's yeah. <laughs> Of course, of course. No, and I thought we, you were going to ask what, what flavor the smoothie was. So yeah, so did I. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to be sensible, trying to do my day job, Carla. Um, what's, what flavor was the smoothie? It was strawberry and banana. Oh, Ooh, nice. Yeah, that's good. just what you want on the morning. Mm. Yeah, it was great. How fast did you have to go to get that smoothie blended? Not that, not that fast. So obviously, like the bike, the bike was stationary, right? I wasn't like whipping around the office. Yeah. Um, but it was, yeah, no. Me and me and James were just sat on these bikes and we were, we were trying to trying to see who could blend the smoothie the quickest. Um, I was on it for about a minute. a minute. We don't really know. No, uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it was quite hard to tell, but they were good smoothies. So oh, nice, brilliant, good stuff, Tom. Can you top that smoothie <laughs> making yeah, and breaking my lab? Depends on that. Um, <laughs> oh, but just to kind of uh, maybe add to that, there's like there's loads of lunchtime groups and different clubs to get involved with. Uh, like Ruth said, I love playing football at lunch, but we also have like a pool table, ping pong table, a games room. It's a really really cool office to work in, and um, yeah, there's lots of stuff to get involved in during your breaks. Yeah, yeah. Sounds it. <laughs> it sounds Tom's like giving up. Tom's like good I can't fun. That one. <laughs> Um, yeah, you do the serious stuff as well as the, you know, work hard and play hard, which sounds good to me. Um, Carla, I'll hand back to you and hear from Amy on next steps and how we can apply, get applying and how it's yeah. going to look. Well, Jess got a soup maker for, for Christmas, so I'm just waiting for it to be set on a bike tomorrow. <laughs> and trying to oh, make yeah. soup. <laughs> <Jess is laughs> <off the bike. laughs> 
<laughs> um, so absolutely, Amy, let's come to you. So um, obviously I mentioned at the beginning of the webinar that all of the opportunities are currently on the MathWorks Hub on GradCracker. Like Tom says, make sure you go do your research, re-watch this webinar, um, thoroughly read the job description, click apply. Amy, over to you, what are the next steps? Yeah, sure. So after you applied through GradCracker, um, candidates will then receive um, a coding challenge um, yeah. and also a like a short video uh, interview. Um, once completed, they then come back to myself initially. Um, so I'll be reviewing those. And they also then get reviewed by our graduate team managers. Um, and then we sort of pro progress through the process. Uh, which will for full time and internships does include a technical interview. Um, as Sheree mentioned, for our technical interviews, they are led by our, our graduate team. Um, so it's a good chance for um, candidates to, to meet potential peers uh, and also for our graduates to develop another skill set. Um, and there's also a manager interview and a, a HR interview. Um, and I would just say um, we do review applications and conduct interviews on a rolling basis. So yeah. as applications come in, we move through, um, I guess, the process. It's not a case of waiting until one day and then moving everyone through. Mm -hmm. oh, that's good to know. Yeah, yeah it's really good to know. I love the interaction that the current grads can have as well as part of the um, recruitment process. I think that's brilliant. And from a student's point of view, can they only apply to one opportunity? Yeah, so how it works is um, on the hub, you'll see the advert for uh, called Engineering Development Group, which we refer yeah. to as EDG, our graduate programme, and then you'll see an uh, internship. So um, with that, depending on your graduation year, either you'll be applying to an internship or a, a full-time position, um, you just need to apply to the one advert um, because we have, I guess, like a, a generic advert like a software development internship advert that covers all of our internships, which we typically hire 20 to 25 each summer. So just through the one pathway. Yeah, perfect. And any hints and tips? I know Shireen gave a bit of a technical hint and tip, but what from your point of view? What yeah, I'd, just, I'd add to that again, be yourself. We yeah. really want to see who you are um, and we want to see kind of what you can bring to the team. Um, we, we are like an international diverse team here in Cambridge and everyone can always add value, something different. So definitely be yourself. Um, and I'd say like right from the initial CV, include everything from education, programming experience, even like non-technical experience. If you've worked, had like a part-time yeah. job, um, it's really good for us to see transferable skills. Um, and again, just make it as a chance to interview us, ask us questions. What are we like about working here? So you can kind of get a feel from your end, everything you want to get covered. Don't feel as if you can't ask us things and we're the ones interviewing. Yeah, definitely. I think that's what Jess is always speaking to students about as well. So make sure you do mention part-time jobs, being part of societies, being part of sports teams everything because it really does show you that you're a really well-rounded person so I think Jess was nodding away thinking thank you Amy for saying that as part of this webinar <laughs> um, and Cambridge I know you keep mentioning that you're based in Cambridge I mean I've been there many times it's a beautiful location but do you help with with um, relocation what what is an offer at Cambridge for somebody who hasn't been there? Yeah, definitely. So um, we have a, quite a lot of staff that do relocate. Um, okay. it's, it's a great city, lots of history, lots going on. Um, and we do want to support with that transition to Cambridge. So we, we have a, a lovely new office, great facilities, um, and we have like three days a week minimum in the office hybrid yeah. work style as well so um we do we would require people to relocate to the area yeah. um and with that we do su provide support we sort of we discussed the package at interview stage in the hr section but it can include things like temporary accommodation to help that transition you've got a base to look for things and yeah. we also have um a new starters teams channel which we add everyone to before starting so um, the graduates can, and also for our interns as well, we have another channel, just so you can kind of uh, connect with each other. Um, some people have found roommates on there, or we'll have our, our current graduate team, they'll post places to look, where we can find local accommodation, different links, just to create that network before starting, which we think it can be really beneficial. Yeah, definitely. So definitely that support network. Thank you very much, Amy. And just to finish off the webinar with a quick fire round about your favourite memory, we cannot include smoothie making. 
That's why you even <laughs> think about it, Thomas. Um, so, Shireen, favourite memory so far about working at Bathworks? Um, international lunch, where we all got to cook something from our like country cuisines, and then we shared it over lunchtime. Oh, what did you cook? I made uh, baba ganoush, like uh, oh. eggplant dip. <laughs> I love that, yeah. Stevie and Jess always like to talk about food in part of these webinars because we're always starving at 3 o'clock on the Thursday. <laughs> Mouth's watering. Um, Thomas, favourite memory? Um, I probably discussed this a little bit before, but it was it was probably when I was back in the library, actually, um, during university, and I, and I first saw my kind of internship yeah. project go live. That was really cool. And yeah. I could kind of, I turned my laptop around and I was showing everyone in the <laughs> library. And it was quite, it's not our math works, but kind of. <laughs> yeah, of course it was, yeah. So you should be really proud of it. Well done. Um, Tom? Uh, yeah, my favourite memory so far is, well, what I would say is this is a really rewarding job yeah. uh, when dealing with customers and helping them solve problems. So uh, maybe just took my own horn here a wee bit. Um, my favourite memory is the first time a customer told me that how happy they were with the support oh. that we had offered. Because yeah. it's really, no, it's really rewarding and it's yeah. just a great feeling to unblock someone. But the first time that happened, it was uh, yeah, a really nice moment for me. Oh, brilliant. Lovely. Thanks, Tom. Well done. And Ruth? Yeah, in the summer in EDG, we all went out and did this escape room in Cambridge, uh, which was really fun. Um, my team won, so hey. <laughs> that's because it's your that's like your favourite memory room. Exactly. Um, perfect. <laughs> Thank you all very very much for joining us today, and you've definitely set this year's webinars off with a bang. It's been really um really beneficial to the students who are watching, um, and hopefully you're going to get your applications in after this webinar. Don't forget, as we've all mentioned, you might be meeting Amy and Shireen during the whole recruitment process. So don't forget to mention that you watched this webinar live and also the recorded version will be on the MathWorks Hub um, as of close of play today, if not tomorrow morning. And join me and Jess next Thursday with CERN. But for now, thank you very much, everybody. It's been brilliant. Are you going to say goodbye in French, Ruth? No. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's already wire, isn't it? <laughs> au revoir, au revoir. Yay, that's a problem. <laughs> au revoir. Goodbye, everybody. Good luck. Thanks. Bye bye. 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 bye.